Good morning, everybody. It's Shanda with Coffee with Shanda, but however, this morning I'm drinking out of this really beat up old Starbucks um, coffee mug, I guess you could say. And if I drink out of this, I drink a ton of water and high burst throughout the day. But if I drink out of glasses, I never seem to get enough water. So imagine that. Anyway, I wanted to say good morning to you guys. Um, I, I just, before, you know, we talked about this the other day, before we jump in today, um, first of all, I want to say that don't underestimate the power of sitting still, the power of just um, sitting still and being with your thoughts. Sometimes we're in such a rush to get through the day that problems that could be solved if you just backed up for a minute are typically just one idea away from freedom. And so, um, you know, every, not every morning, but every day, I spend about 30 minutes and I just listen to, I actually listen to some Christian music um, recently because there's someone who's advising me who has been listening to some Christian music. Um, basically, it's just because it's a connection or intentional connection with God. And so I've been laying there, um, laying and listening to this music and noticing like the flies dancing together and noticing um, just the presence of what's happening on the planet. And I live right here on the ocean. And gosh, it's dark today, huh? You can see the background, it's so dark. But I live here on the ocean, and I'm just going to open it here. And you guys, I don't know if you can see. But the only reason why I'm showing that to you right now is because that ocean, I don't know if you can hear it, but that ocean right now has got some crazy things happening in it. You know, and, and all last night and, and this morning, I was messaging with my best friend as she's trying to get out of Florida uh, because the hurricane's hitting right now. And then we have clients who are in the islands and they're affected by it. And, you know, I'm watching my, my community and myself rally. And I just want to just stop and I don't want to make this coffee with Shanda all about this. But I do want to say, you know, please, if you've still done nothing, do something like if you can't if you can't get yourself to give money to the red cross or something then get online and google and see where you can drop off clothes uh to make a difference for these people you know i think about the fact that i live in southern california and i'm not a debbie downer at all i don't walk around in any sort of a fear state that it's going to happen i do have a belief that i know it sounds morbid but i do have a belief that if it's my time it's my time and however i obviously don't want it to be my time um, but I live, you know, La Jolla is on, you know, an earthquake fault line, you know, right along the cliff. They actually cannot get earthquake insurance. Um, you know, so I, I know that I live in a zone that something disastrous can happen very easily. And I don't know why now, but I think sitting still, the amount of time I spend with God and sit still, I, I really can feel that people need our help right now. And it breaks my heart if you're just like addicted to looking at the news or even addicted to jumping on Twitter or just Googling to look up what's happening with the storm. But yet, if you still haven't done anything to make a difference, you know, I'm not trying to put any guilt on anybody, but I'm saying, you know, wake up. Like you do matter and you can make a difference. And I know that, you know, at least even for me, you know, I have a full day, and as I'm working through the day, I'm serving clients, and, you know, today I'm working on storytelling uh, strategies to really get into my heart and be more vulnerable, even more so, um, you know, and so I'm practicing literally all day today. I'm practicing skilling up my ability to be an influencer to help my clients get out of their own way and land my messaging that I know without a doubt can get them to the places that they want to get to. And so there's not just the aspect of just making offers or marketing or fulfillment, but there's also the, the piece about studying, studying to just get better. Um, so the day is full and I won't be thinking about the hurricane every second of the day. And so, but when you do think about the fires and the hurricanes and stuff like that, just stop and do something like, like just stop and do something like donate clothes or give money you know, the Bible talks about in Scripture that if you give sacrificially, you will be provided for. And I know that's such a hard thing to think about, but, you know, don't just rely on, don't just rely on God to be able to be there for you when you're in a breakup or, you know, you're walking through a hard moment. 
actually just stop and just, you know, look up and make a difference. So please, you know, if it was easy for you to give money, give something more than what it's easy for you to do. I mean, go spend time, spend 15, 20 minutes and go through your closet today and pack up some, some clothes that you haven't worn in six months. I mean, if you haven't worn it in six months, it's not your favorite anything and it doesn't make you feel great. And if it doesn't make you feel great, you should probably pay it forward to somebody who would be grateful for that piece, that item of clothing. But stop and do something. I think often we operate in this world of um, I'm 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 I give enough. I give enough. And if you think I give enough, that that's the same mentality as this conversation of um, I I've done enough personal development. I don't feel like I need to do that anymore. Like every great leader will tell you when you have those type of enough conversations. At least let me just clarify this. Any great leader that you want to listen to and be influenced because, you know, I, I just had I just had uh, lunch yesterday with Maria Asraf and she called me up and said, hey, let's go for lunch. And, and we were chatting and I'm not going to talk about who we were chatting about, but we were just saying, you know, this person is a successful person that, that we were sharing, you know, a moment with. We weren't talking crap, but we were just talking about how this person wanted to speak at one of my events and how I had a weird feeling about him and, and said no. And she was like, oh yeah, this person is wildly successful and he's a dick. Like he's not conscious, right? He gives to get. And so it's such a weird hook because I, I remember when I used to give to get, but I really was giving to fix me versus giving to give, right? And so anyway, my point is, is that there's these moments and, and you know, with messaging my best friend, who was on a tarmac and for two hours in Florida, then they pulled her off and she went and slept for two hours, but she really didn't sleep. And now she's back at the airport trying to get out on another flight. And like, it's very present to me about the fact that, um, you know, she's not safe or maybe she is safe, but there's a feeling of uncertainty of her not being safe. And you know, that that's a very deep, I mean, she's like my soul sister. Right. And that's a very deep moment. And so I just, I just share like, Give more than you've ever given before. You know, if, if there was an earthquake here, I look at my little son. I was, I was hugging him this morning. And I, I, th I was thinking about my son. I was like, gosh, if there was an earthquake here and we needed help, do you not wish, like all you Californians, do you not wish that people would look up? Do you not wish that people in your mastermind would actually send you money? I mean, I've been messaging people in our mastermind that, that are clients of mine in the hurricane area saying, do you want me to transfer money to you? Do you want, like, is there, what can I do? You know, and this is stuff my clients don't know I'm doing, but I'm doing it because I'm look like it's, it's what I believe is, is way and beyond what, what we're, we're asked to do is what causes you to even deserve a life of freedom and a life of, you know, absolute overflow, which is why a lot of people follow me, right? So again, you don't do it to get that because you couldn't sustain it. I mean, if you get exhausted working your business, you're giving to get still. I mean, you are. I mean, I, I've been through hard times. I mean, I have a multiple seven figure company right now. Um, we're balancing on eight figures. I mean, I've been through hard times, but I never felt exhausted from my business because I never gave to get. I wasn't, I wasn't, well, I shouldn't say that. At one point I did give to get and I was exhausted. I had, I had a coach make me work three times, three days a week. And, um, and the rest of the week I had to be off. And she did that to have me unhook from this in intensity of this drive. Now I have a drive, but my drive is connected to a vision that is way beyond what I'm, um, what I need. I mean, I have everything I need right now. I don't need more. You know, my retirement set. My family is great. I'm able to support my family and I'm able to support my clients. It's a compelling pull. So of course, I go through hard times just like you do. But I'm not exhausted and I'm not complaining about my business. And um, and I'm in it to serve and make a difference. Again, I don't want to make this about me. I just wanted to make this about. Just the distinction in your mind, it's such a small clip, right, that has you realize that, wow, if you want somebody to show up for you, over and above just maybe giving you a swipe file or a webinar to copy, or those are all generous things, they're great. But like even with my client base, I've taught them how to be like that, and now many of them think that that is just generous, 
and they're really generous. No, 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 that's called your standard now. Your standard is the same standard that I have in the essence of I give everything I can to my clients to succeed. Now how about going into overflow? How about going into no more complaining? How about going into the space of like you are a true influencer and a leader? And look at what you've done for the people, for people that you love or people that you don't even know that are being affected right now on the planet around hurricanes and fires, right? Like, are you giving beyond what you normally would give? Are, and then are you looking up and actually asking other people you know and inspiring them to get into the game of giving so that they can make a difference for people, so that they can feel the benefit of what it's like to actually stop just being busy with their life, but to look up and realize that anything can happen to any of us at any time. You know, I, I look at, there's a man that I know that, that was absolutely in a position where he was financially, um, I mean, he had drivers, he had cooks, he had everything. I mean, super, super powerhouse guy. And today, by the way, he's living on like sub subsidized by the government. Right. Um, I have another person in my family that I pay. I, I like many months. I send money, um, and not just fifty bucks, and not just five hundred bucks. I'm talking like three, four, five grand at a time to be able to make sure that this person can can live a decent life. You know. And so, um, I don't know. Just look up, you guys. Uh, you know, this conversation. If any, if any influencer ever tells you that that um, you're too generous or that you're being too generous. Honestly, that's just not a world you want to live in. And I'm not saying that there's not people out there who say those things or tell you to like give free things on the web to be able to get. That is a, that's a part of marketing. But when your free things suck because you're trying to give to get or they don't really create these huge massive movements forward in your business, no, it's because you're still starting from a place that's all about you. And when you can shift that and make it all about other people, marketing is easy. And it doesn't start often, it doesn't start in our businesses because our businesses are often so close to us that they're connected to our own survival. So if you can start being like this in other areas of your life, what happens is all of a sudden you sit down to create a program, a product, um, a free ebook, a free course, you know, a Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving's going to be here before we know it. A Black Friday special that can provide so much wealth and abundance for your company and create, you know, such an overflow in the world of your impact. But when it, you just get a little bit of a movement, for, like when it just performs a little bit for you, it actually is because you sat down and came from a place of, well, I have to put this together. I want to because it's going to provide me a sales lead offer that's going to sell something. You get what I'm saying? Like it's so riddled in intensity to get. And if, so this is what I'm trying to say to you. I say this to my clients all the time, and I will stand in this fire for as long as I have to until enough of them get it that all of them get it because enough of them get it. If you give in these areas of overflow in other places, like go – give uncomfortably to the hurricane sufferers or the people who are going through fires right now. Go, like, come on, you're not, let's be honest, you are not a leader if you just gave 50 bucks and 50 bucks was nothing for you. That is not a leader move. I mean, that's a loser move. That's not a leader move. I mean, that's just the truth. Like, you just did that really because you felt guilty, you felt bad for them, and you just gave. Just freaking stop for a second and say, what would be a stretch for you to give? And give that. And if money is not something that you authentically cannot give right now, I mean, I have a whole other set of coaching on that, but I'm not going to go into that because I just want you to experience the power of generosity and just go in your closet. And maybe your give is giving something that you actually really love and that you're going to give that forward that's in your closet. Maybe it is something that you do wear all the time. Because you can't sacrificially maybe give financially, you can sacrificially give in another area that really would impact you, right? You know, I love Wayne Dyer and have Wayne, how Wayne Dyer gave everything away. I think at 65, he gave his condo, paid off condo to his to his assistant. I mean, I have clients right now, and I and I mean this with love, but I want it to be an impact, right? I have clients right now that are afraid to pay their virtual assistants. They want to give them 
the bare minimum because they're so concerned about their own self and their own bottom line and they just don't get it yet. That when you take care of people in your company, it's the same as taking care of your mother, your father. I mean, I know people who complain about taking care of their parents, right? Like you've got to unhook from all these devilish thoughts, right? You've got to unhook from all these devilish thoughts and really realize that you are safer. You are much safer if you learn how to operate like that. Now, I get told often, well, Shanda, I, I'm tithing, I'm giving, and yet I haven't seen anything come in yet, and actually I'm living with less. Well, just give it a chance. You know, doing this just one time and not making it a lifestyle is like going to the gym or going on a diet for a short period of time and expecting yourself to hold that weight loss for a lifetime. It is a lifestyle. Generosity is a lifestyle. Being a top influencer on the internet is a lifestyle. There are people who are doing it who have mastered uh, persuasion and are not generous, and they will give you coaching around just give to get, and it will be an effing job. And you will see many of them change their models over and over and over again because it's a job, right? But when you shift over to influencers, who are in the market for a very, very, very long time and truly not living a facade of smoke and mirrors of the Ferrari, but are actually living, actually living authentically, like have great relationships and working on them, have great families and working on them, um, you know, have money in the bank, are living within their means and are giving a big portion of their overflow to making a difference. So you cannot say that they give overflow or donate or tithe or these things because they have it. It's all relative. It's all relative. My expenses today, just even just my empl my my staff employee payroll is almost a million dollars a year. Okay, so it's all relative about how you're operating. So, you know, I hate this this logical bullshit conversation that some quasi influencers like to influence other quasi influencers around which is which is when you get a little bit of success you get cocky and you start influencing people around these these logical conversations like oh bill gates can do that because he's rich or oprah can do that because she's rich or you know shanda can do that because um you know she's she's got this great company behind her it's like no no, no it's it's called it's all relative and so who, what world do you want to live in? Do you want to live in the world that I give enough? And how would you feel when fucking shit hits the fan in your life, when everybody looks at you and shit's hitting the fan in their life and they say, you know what, I've given enough. I'm just going to just, you know, focus over here, right? Or do you want to live in a world that there's overflow, that there's generosity, that there's love far beyond what people even expect that they could actually receive and give. And I believe that's the world that we're moving into because as the economy shifts and as we go into this space of high unemployment over the next eight years, you know, if you just start listening to Tony Robbins, start listening to Robert Kiyosaki, start listening to Warren Buffett, start listening to these people, start Googling about the crash and just listen, not from a space of fear, Listen from a space of consciousness and realize that as unemployment moves over the next eight years to 35 to 50 percent, that people will be forced to create retirement, retirement businesses, hobby businesses. Um, they're going to be forced into some level of entrepreneurship, some level of it, right? And so what happens is we're, we're getting thrown into an economy of love and generosity and service versus I just worked my nine to five and now I'm clocking out. And I don't care, I can leave everything at the office and I can go get some of my own. And that world is going away. It's going away because computers are doing the electronic um, tasks and people are being tasked out, which means that we're just not going to be task rabbits anymore. We're going to have to be connected individuals. And I believe there's something really beautiful about that. So I'll end on that note. Have a phenomenal weekend. Um, I will see you Monday on Coffee with Shanda next week. 
We have an incredible lineup of amazing people. I have my old client, great friend, Sage Levine. So privileged that I got to help her take her business into uh, well into the seven figures. Um, help stand behind her. She just became a Hay House author, which was a dream of hers, and stand behind her personal life as well. And um, I'm going to have her on next week and talk about what it's taken for her to be able to step into her vision, how she shifted her mindset where it used to be about the fact that, um, shit, this is hard and I don't want to work harder. She used to be in that conversation and where now she realized she's working more hours than she's ever worked. I know that's not sexy, but here's what is sexy. She goes, Shanda, you were right. I am so compelled and fulfilled by my company. She goes on a daily basis. She literally feels lit up about what she's doing. This is a woman that when I met her had adrenal fatigue, her back would go out, she was always sick, and her entire community had the same mindset. And as we worked together, you know, there was no space inside me to allow that space of body breakdown. And so she evolved past it because I saw her up here and she evolved past it. And she's been able to really step into her vision and her purpose. And that woman gets generosity now in a way that I wish everybody would get it. And um, yeah, it'll be a blessing to have her on next week. So she'll be on on September 13th. Um, and then I have some other really great people coming on. So next week's going to be a fantastic week on Coffee with Shanna. So tune in at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you haven't followed the page, go ahead and follow the page. And I'll talk to you soon. Have a great weekend. Mwah.